Magnet has as its mission to strengthen manufacturing in Northeast Ohio. Um, and there are two elements to it. The one is to help especially small to medium uh, companies grow. And um, uh, over the years, we have basically helped create or save about 1,000 manufacturing jobs a year in Northeast Ohio. Our biggest problem in Northeast Ohio is to find skilled labor. This is constraining our growth in the region because we cannot copy the German model. There's a problem with the German model in copying it here. There are many. But one of them is that the German model believes in tracking people, right? While we believe everybody should have the opportunity to go to college. And this is why we actually designed the program as early college, early career, which means that we ask the students as they join this pass, we give them the opportunity to get an associate's degree over time, and the, the participating companies have all said, we are happy to help them to get a bachelor's degree at the end of the day, because we love to have more engineers, right? So we actually provide a career path with no limit if the students are willing to perform accordingly. The key concept of ECEC, it's industry back. We are going to the employers and we say, what kind of talent do you actually need? And then we go, sit down and we say, okay, if this is what you need, let's go to the community colleges and say, what can you deliver? And at times they will say, I can do this, but I can't do that. When you think in the past, manufacturing was the social elevator to get people from poor neighborhoods to the, the middle class. And the only thing you needed was brawn and commitment. This elevator is broken. This elevator doesn't work anymore. The new elevator doesn't need brawn, it needs brain and it needs skill. And what I'm excited about is that with the program we have underway, we're not only solving the huge workforce need out there that our companies need to grow, but we also rebuild a social elevator that helps people coming out of the poorer neighborhoods into a wonderful uh, uh, middle class life standard. It's es estimated by Team Neo that it's gonna be 49,000 jobs that need to be filled uh, by 2025 here in Northeast Ohio alone. All of those jobs are gonna require some form of post high school education, some type of technical training, not necessarily a four year degree, but definitely more than a high school diploma. This is a very good picture of where we were at the time. We have four of our primary manufacturers who at the CEO level has said, we will be a part of this program if you can help, if you can find the students and bring them to us, we'll be a part of the program. We identified two high schools, uh, primarily, especially MC Square STEM through our partner uh, at the Cleveland Foundation that had innovative leaders. We knew about Wycliffe School District and their 10-year plan, and we knew that they were innovative in the Lake County area. And because of our board representation, the community colleges, as Felix talked about, Dr. Johnson, when he heard about the early college, early career program, they were all on board. But they all said, okay, if you build it, we're gonna partner with it, but someone had to come in and build it. Fast forward to May 2017, between um, not just myself, but really the team that we have in the workforce and talent development and the team we have in Magnet, we've expanded the program. Uh, you have about seven manufacturers represented there. Uh, we have five high schools now, Lorraine City High School in Lorraine County, uh, Wycliffe City High School, uh, Wycliffe City School District, MC Square STEM High School, Ginn Academy, as well as John Marshall School of Engineering. Lorraine City High School, for one, it has its career tech educational high school uh, on the same campus as its traditional high school. So we're working with the career tech school there. Uh, MC Square STEM is the only high school in America that's on a corporate, on a Fortune 500 college uh, campus, uh, being at Neela Park, as well as uh, with their differentiated learning style. Same for Wycliffe City High School, where you have a, a, a superintendent who's built out a 10-year plan where you reach back as far as sixth grade to where you start identifying manufacturing or career pathways. So our goals for year two, the implementation year, as we, we mentioned, we had a planning grant for year one. 
expose 600 students to manufacture. This has been done through assemblies, uh, plant tours, speaking engagements. We've touched uh, approximately 800 students throughout three counties and told them about advanced manufacturing. Um, have 60 students enrolled in ECEC, 38 of those being from CMSD. We've accomplished that task as well. Uh, we also uh, needed to partner with a collaborator. We've had a meeting set up and we're in the process of finalizing agreement with Youth Opportunities Unlimited to be our internship, uh, to, to, to be our internship um, uh, advocate because they have a very uh, a thorough internship program. And they're actually going to have a dedicated individual that just works with, ECEC, with the ECEC program. Uh, also to create a pre-apprenticeship curriculum. Uh, my, my Vice President of Workforce and Talent Development has designed a pre-apprenticeship online curriculum that all of our students are in the process of taking. And then to expand from our, our initial four employers, uh, to we've expanded to eight employers. They asked us to gain three, we expanded to four more, with two more coming on from Lorraine High School after the event that we did uh, uh, last week, I'm sorry, that we did last Wednesday. So I, by the time we launch this fall, we're gonna have about 10 employers that are at the table having internships. So the ECEC solution. We're not saying that there's, that what we're doing with ECEC is brand new. In actuality, most of the parts of ECEC have been in function for the past 15 to 20 years. What early college, early career ECEC has done is brought it all together. As Ethan will always say, we brought all the pieces and parts that have been operating in silos to be one unified uh, opportunity. So certifications, soft skills, earn and learn, career awareness, mentoring, college credit plus, and then we had the foresight to say, you know what, we need to make sure the support systems are there. So we have parental engagement. I wanna recognize the two parents that are here tonight with their students, uh, with, their, with their children, because parental engagement is a must with this program. It works in any school. We have five different types of high schools that we're implementing this model. It's year round in the company. So it's a two year internship, uh, two days a week in, the, in uh, their junior year uh, with a six week internship over the summer and then up to three to four days a week in their senior year as that student schedule permits. Uh, it's a path to associate's degree. So in our education, once again, the American education system, it's not just exiting a student out of high school into a career job where they have no room for advancement or growth. It builds a pathway that they can get their associate's degree as well as their bachelor's degree. And then we also have the other four-year degree, like the other white meat, uh, the journey person, the, the apprenticeship track, which can equally provide for a career pathway for students as they grow, uh, as they grow their career. We talk about we engage students beginning in the ninth grade. We identify students uh, that will go into the cohort beginning in the 10th grade. And 11th grade is when they start their 10 hours per week internship, eight to 10 hours per week, depending on the company. And then in 12th grade, the student will graduate from the program with an industry recognized certification, two years of work experience, as well as, uh, uh, as, well as college credit and their traditional high school diploma based on the new ODE pathway, uh, Ohio Department of Education uh, pathways to graduation. Let's talk about how our current pathway looks for students. It's high school, and this is the pathway that maybe many of us in this room have chosen. You go to a four-year institution or maybe a two-year college, then to a four-year institution, and for many of us, it's been successful. But we all know the data says that for every one of our members of our community, it's not successful. So enter ECEC, three pathways. You go to high school, you have a career apprenticeship pathway, you have a college, a four-year, two-year pathway, and then you have the college career combination pathway where students can go into a full-time a job but also have uh, the opportunity to uh, tuition reimbursement at the college. It was pointed out on the slide that there's a big need for uh, manufacturing labor, and manufacturing labor isn't for us just skilled labor. Uh, it's also uh, engineering, technicians, uh, technical sales. Uh, all of those are big needs, and the foundation of all those is the basic manufacturing skills. So for us to do an outreach, uh, not just at the college level, but uh, to the high school level to start building uh, a core group of students that can help us to fill that void, it's, it's very valuable.
We've been doing internship programs for several years now, but just to get engaged with um, a new solution um, and something that is so forward thinking in terms of investing in um, these students for the future and how we're going to make a, a long-term impact um, you know, in the community and, and getting folks into these jobs, um, you know, just it, it's huge to us from our perspective. And, and again, the out-of-the-box thinking, at least here, not so much in Europe, but here, um, you know, we've traditionally gone the route of just going straight to the technical schools or programs, but, you know, really opening up that pool. I think we're recognizing more and more we have to be open to figuring out ways to identify um, kind of the adjacent skill set, right? And I'm sure that the same goes. We're really excited and willing to be part of that process for these students. Um, they have a commitment to want to learn, to want to grow. Um, they like to come to work. They like the work they do. Um, it's we need to bring in people that care about manufacturing, that want to be involved in the process of building things. And that's the kind of people we like to hire. Some of the problems we have with recruiting is that a lot of the younger people don't have what this program is going to offer them. Uh, recognizing that there's a lot of uh, um, programs that have been halted at the high school level because they're expensive to, to run. So we, we anticipate there's a need for, for us to train on those skills that uh, students don't have coming out of high school. Or, and, and so this is an opportunity for us to, to help them to develop those types of skills. So just basic print reading skills, how to use power tools. It's going to help them to walk in our door and know how to read a blueprint, which is almost 101 on our floor. Um, know how to use a caliper, a gauge. Um, know how to use, do basic math, uh, trigonometry, which is important in a lot of our roles. Um, so they are going to walk in our door with skills that we are having a very hard time finding. So it's, it will fill a big void. You're going to be working to coach the students at the schools around, um, you know, coming into a professional environment and being on time and good attendance and some of those core foundational things that we talked about. So I think that's a fantastic element to the program that not um, everybody is getting. What it does for Lincoln Electric is it allows students to get a head start when if they decide right out of high school that they're looking for a job, they've got that much of a head start in front of their peers of, of terminology in terms of familiarity with the company and the policies and, and how things work. So it gives them a, a, a foot in the door and maybe a, a step forward compared to their peers. So everything kind of stems off of these foundational opportunities. So if somebody chooses and they start off in the factory, they've got a career path to be in maybe quality assurance, they could be in uh, our service department, they could become uh, product developers, uh, they can continue to go through schooling and, and become technicians or research and development engineers, and, and I'm, I'm a product of the same type of uh, training. I went through college as a co-op and ultimately became, you know, what took an engineering path, but it was really good foundation for whatever, whether you, know, you take a professional career path or otherwise, there's so many different opportunities that you get out of a, a program like this. Our vision is that this goes uh, culturally like wildfire to every manufacturer that says, I want something like this in my factory so that when we, by the way, I'm Ethan Karp, I run Magnet, when we go out to the many, many companies that we do across Northeast Ohio, the 11,000 companies that drive about half of our economy, and they all say we need workers, I can stop saying, well, we can help you retain those workers better, and sorry, people just aren't interested in manufacturing. We can actually say, well, there's something you can do about it. Here's a whole bunch of other companies, the pioneers in, these, in this room, that are actually going through it right now. So workforce development with academic tracks. We have our academic engineering uh, dean here. We have our academic IT dean here. So we're looking at how do we collaborate with academics as well as workforce and also employer engagement. So how are we building that together? So this is really in line with our plan going forward, say over the next five years, to really continue to roll out our uh, centers of excellence. But also from a manufacturing perspective, you know, looking at how, as 
as you expand, that's a great opportunity for us to partner to say, hey, you know, since it's online training, because we can load equipment into the mobile unit, we can partner and have you send our mobile unit out as a part of your ECEC. It doesn't just have to be all on magnet. Look in school. We're willing as educators to take these risks necessary to change the curriculum and change the dynamics in school to get students to prepared to go where they need to go. We want to expand programs like this so that everyone in the community can be successful and we can expand that dynamic. It matches our vision for putting our students in a position to be successful outside of the world of school. In Lake County, 8,000 deficit jobs in manufacturing and we want to be part of filling that void. The reality is now anything you want to learn, you don't have to sit in a lecture to do. You watch a YouTube video and you can figure it out. Um, the kids can pick up on that. So we'd rather send them out into the community and allow them to have experiences so that's how they obtain their learning and they learn how to solve problems. That's really our goal. So anything that we can do to facilitate our students reaching that goal is what we want to do. In this endeavor has uh, just really jump started the process all over again and uh, we, we couldn't be happier. We have partnerships. Um, we've partnered with Nordson off and on uh, over several years, but not in, in this manner. This is very different, and uh, it has brought on additional partnerships. Um, you mentioned a few more. And from a community college perspective, when we have individuals who are coming in to see us, we offer internships, we offer apprenticeship training, but they're adults. And so oftentimes you, you, you miss totally the opportunity to grab and reach students that are in that middle school age. Uh, and I agree with you, Felix, it needs to be middle school. So if we can get close to that, you know, if we're looking at a high school model, that's exactly what we want to do. Because whatever they get with the companies, we can just continue to enhance and build. This isn't a competitive environment. This is collaborative. And we're saying, how do we continue to feed? Because if we all did our very best, we still could fall short of that number, I mean 49,000. So we have to do things differently. We have to look at different approaches. The other thing that I think was critical that you mentioned was the pathway out of poverty. Uh, we have to create those pathways for students because if they don't see it, they don't live it, they don't know it exists. And so if we can give them alternatives, this is really the model that we are definitely interested in partnering with at Tri-C. This program was presented, we announced it um, to the students and gave very little information. It was actually our highest attended parent meeting that we've had in three years because so many students were excited about this and so many parents showed up for this. Um, we were out of seats in the room that we were in when Terrence came and presented. They were all extremely well spoken in the interviews. Um, they all had very clear plans on how working at Swagelock or working with any manufacturing company is going to take them to their future goals. So I think, um, like I said, they're going to give you better answers than I could ever give you. Uh, they're ready to go to work. They're, they're ready to do whatever they need to do. It's, uh, it's incredible. I've spoken with their instructor. Well, I see him twice a day anyway. But uh, he's like, they're, they're working harder. They're moving faster. They're just really excited about the whole program, the thought of going to work, being a part of an internship program, um, seeing the number of people that are behind them, wanting their success, wanting to see that, help them with that. And uh, you know, I, I see those students every day in the hallways, and I get a lot more high fives these days. So. For us, it came down to just a couple of questions that the students asked. And you know you're being successful when students say, can we work more than the eight to 10 hours a week? Can we take more classes at Lakeland Community College when we have the opportunity? You know, that's what we're hearing. A lot of opportunities along with training that you would not normally get from any other school or, um, or program. And it, um, it opens doors for the future that would not normally be open. So through the Magnet program, you can do things that you would not normally be able to do. I have a future going to a foreign university or college, and it can help me pay off my tuition, which helps me, you know, because where I come from, and it can take the stress off my parents. And even if I don't have a career in the future in manufacturing, I can still have the bragging rights to say I participated in something that nobody else did. 
like my parents. The opportunity to partner with Swage Lock, and then even if I don't continue to work with Swage Lock after high school, it's a lot of things I could go with the credentials or the credits or anything else I would like to put on a resume. Um, that's what I get out of it. And a lot of opportunities that's been open that's not really supposed to be open for some people. And there's a lot of options out there in the world. And this is, opens up a lot of doors for that. That's why I'm happy for it. Um, I think you'll find, and I'm sure this is the same at, at Lincoln Electric and all the other companies, um, our other associates um, who work at Swajak get so much energy from the high school students that come in. You are often the ones um, who are the most motivated and the most dedicated and bring so much energy, and there's a lot of excitement. So we're really looking forward to having you guys. Investment in economic prosperity for our region. That's probably the most important key that, that strikes me. This is an, an investment that you make in the prosperity that will be Northeast Ohio.